Assalamu alaikum, dear viewers. Welcome back after break. And um, we're going to welcome Abdul Hakim Bay. Abdul Hakim Bay, welcome to our show. Thank you. Thank you. You know, we were mm. talking about, uh, you seen the topic, we were talking about, you know, six weeks of long holiday for our youth. And um, I'm struggling with my kids, actually. So these six weeks sometimes can make them or can break them. You know, if we don't plan it out, so it can break them. So you, as a, I'm sure you've got a uh, few kids. Um, I do have, yes. Would you like to <laughs> talk about your kids, please? How, how, do you, how do you deal with them, especially in that six weeks? Well, it's just the beginning of holiday, so a long way to go. And, well, I could already feel the struggle with the kids. Um, staying home is quite difficult for them. They want to go out every single day. So far, managing to take them out. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's planning ahead, actually. We've been uh, planning quite a few weeks back. So how old are, are your kids? Uh, eldest is 13, and I go 10 year old to 9 year old, and I got a 3 year old daughter. Yeah. So, busy family. That's, five no, no, that's great, actually. That's, that's a blessing of Allah. But I think, you know, like <coughs> a lot of difficulty comes actually after 14, 15, 16, 18, 19 years old. They are so they don't have a job, they go to university, mm. and then how do we deal with them actually? That's, that's, that's another field actually, dealing with the adults, isn't it? I'm not going to say, it's not. When they become 15, actually he's adult. Oh yeah, no, even, even when he's 13, he's, he's, he's in the stage of becoming an adult. So I think we used to treat them as adults and treat them as I should be treated by another adult. And spend time with them, that's the most important thing. Spend much time. So with our parents, especially Asian communities, we don't spend time with the children. We let them free, even in the house they're quite free to do whatever they like. They're spending the time with them. Even if you're there on the iPad or a phone or watching TV, you should be there watching with them guiding them through if there is any necessary and they, they want to feel that they're with their parents all the time that's true mm -hmm. when they demand you something how do you deal with that because they, de they can demand all day isn't it kids are kids man. they want this they want that they want to go out they want games they're quite expensive as well the games the clothes some but even the trainers how much is trainers 90 pounds <laughs> can't afford it so how do you feel the demands it's, it's very difficult. You just have to balance it out. It depends how the situation is, because every situation is different. How, how the child is. Some child are quite aggressive and demanding. They want something, they want it. Some child are quite soft. You just have to play with it, find the right solution for each child. So if I ask you, as a, as a young parent, actually, you are young, how do you... My uh, parents are old style, we say, and they were quite different. They were just... Yes and no. There's no anything in the middle. <coughs> that breaks breaks it down. The relationship breaks down. There's no loving in it. Is my after lesson team and is going to tell me what to do. That's it. So these are the old style, or probably uh, you know like our Asian continent people are like that. They're very strict and they're very. Uh, but new ones like yourself and others that now that we me myself been to the one of the training called parenting courses. Mm -hmm. It tells you how to deal with kids even difficult kids, you know, you got to treat them with respect, love, and have some bonding with that person, you know, you got to, that's the only way we can communicate well, otherwise they will, they will think, why does he keep telling me no, no, no in everything, what do you mean no, no, no in everything, he does everything, he smokes, I can't smoke, he wants to have go, I can't have go, <coughs> he wants to have, the, I can't do nothing and he can do everything, that is a very difficult pl place to be. Well, that's different, but we need to find a balance, we need to say no sometimes, we can't we can't stop saying no. There must be a no in a certain places. We have to find a balance how to deal with children and how to deal with certain ones. And we need to say yes and no. It have to be discussion as well. Give us an example. Say, uh, say uh, today is Thursday. What did you do? Give us an example like how did you spend your time with kids? Um, it would be nice. Well, the Today, actually, I, I'm here, so they're home. So they're probably bored. My phone is off, so they can't okay. call me. <laughs> Well, example is, uh, it's, it's, it's how you build a relationship with them. When I'm not in the house, they will feel very bored. Although they got the mums and brothers and sisters, everybody in the house, and uh, they feel very bored. So I'll be on the phone with them. They'll be keep, keep on calling me. How long you are? They're more like a daddy's boy, are they? <laughs> <laughs> how long children? are you going to be? So, yeah, it's, uh, um, it's, it's difficult, especially the weather as well. Taking them out is quite difficult for us, especially the parents who are walking. 
Um, I'm lucky one not working at the moment. Maybe I've got plenty of time to spend with them, especially persons working 9 till 5. Maybe like some people are spending 12 hours at work. So for them, it's very difficult to uh, organize time to spend with children. So I'll mm. go back to Imran. Imran, um, you are the champion. That's great to have uh, you know, in, in, a, in the name title, I'm the champion. Yeah. <laughs> Um, tell us about your young young days. Um, you know, we were talking about communication with yeah. our parents and the brother. And, uh, something that brother here said sort of reminded me of a little time, well, a part of when I was younger, which is what he said, it's the communication, spending time with your children and the bonding. And like you said, the parents of the older generation, they don't really do that as much, especially <coughs> in the Asian community is the younger parents are more inclined and they do bond with their children because they understand how important it is. With my father, he was working a lot. So a lot of the time when he's not at home, he's at work. And when he's at home, there wasn't a lot of bonding really. And what happened with me was, that's when I sort of, so I was about 14, that's when I got into the boxing. And so I started to see my coach at the time. I'd see him a few times a week. and. So I see him on a regular basis. And then so we started training together. So this is a form of bon a bond bonding. So just playing sports with your sons, which um, fathers don't do is bonding. Yeah, and that's sort of how I be started to become closer to my coach. And I started to look up to him as a mentor at first and then became more of a father figure because of the time I was spending with him. And as the years went by, I think I was maybe 16, 17 now. So two, three years down the line, um, He'd call me sometimes and say, oh, I'm going out. Do you want to come with me for a drive? Um, do you want to come out for a gr uh, bite to eat? Just oh, little things. That's it's, amazing. It's nothing Honestly, that is, nice. it's, it's, that not, is beauty. it's not a big thing, mm. but it's a little thing. So spending time together and bonding. Tell and me how you felt when he said to you, um, be honest and said, let's go for a drive. How did you feel? I used to be happy. I'd be like, yes, let's go. Because like I said, I didn't get that bonding from my father. And I don't hold anything against anything against him for it it's just he was brought up in a different way yeah. and he didn't know how to express <coughs> his feelings which i realized as i got older but when i was younger at that time i just thought he didn't really care much because he wasn't showing it even though that wasn't the case because he was actually it's never the case i have to defend him it's never the case actually they uh, the one who doesn't show love actually they love more in some cases most cases actually especially at asian ones yeah. you know subhanallah the, how much they love the kids it's unbelievable. When you're not there, they cry. Yeah. When something happens to you, they are the one who most cries a lot because mm. they're too tough. They don't show it to anyone. But I love you. Yeah. Then it's, it's the culture. They never brought up in their culture. In the same way, we themselves. can't do the same. Sometimes when I went home, actually, I tried with my big mm. kids. I want to say, I, I love you. Um, I couldn't say it. But you know, I think the problem there is you need to start that at a young age with your children mm. cause, because once they become older, it's very difficult. Yeah. So if you haven't started that sort of relationship where you're open with your feelings, you sh to do that when they're older is almost impossible. So I think that's where the problem is. So then instead of getting closer, you, they grow more distant in terms of closeness. Um, going back to the sort of the example I was given, because my coach was taking me out, it was a little thing, just spending time together. I started to look up to him as a father figure and I thought this is the type of things that my dad should be doing with me but he isn't and at the time I thought he didn't really care and when I was first started off boxing he didn't like it he said to me I don't want you doing it that's it that's that and I just thought he's just stopping me from doing something I enjoy why is he being like this for why isn't he supporting me he should be supporting me in something that I enjoy it was only a little bit later when my mum she kind of explained to me it's not that your dad doesn't care he does care the reason he doesn't want you to box is because he doesn't want to see you get hurt. But his problem is he can't say that to you. Mm -hmm. He can't express it. So when she explained that to me, I kind of understood. At that time, I'm still a teenager. I was 17, 18. Um, so, and that time, you, because I think as young adults and teenagers, you what you see is what you take in. So if you see someone's, yeah. your parents aren't spending time with you, they're not expressing their love for you. You think they don't care. They've got other priorities, which they think are more important. Whereas, like Brother here was saying, you need to take some time out. You need to spend some time. And even if it's 
like I said, from a young age, they call him to see where are you, at, what are you doing, Dad? When are you coming home? That little bit of connection, it makes a big difference. And I noticed that, it's like with my little sister, she was born when I was about 16. And I realized that me and my dad didn't have a close bond at that time. So I tried to fill that gap. So as she's been growing up, I've been trying to maintain a closer relationship to her. And it's, Alhamdulillah, it's really good. She's nine years old now, she's almost 10. And even now, when I go home, she'll run up to the door and say, Borobai is home, Borobai is home. And she'll give me a hug and she'll give me a kiss every time I go outside the house. And the thing is, if I didn't have a close relationship when she's young, when she gets older, yeah. it gets a little bit awkward. So that relationship getting close. So how do you deal with this? Say sometimes you know you know you're not always in good mood. Okay, you had a bad yeah. day, but you wanna go home like and open the door and your sister will come to you and go. So how do you plan it before you open it? Do you have a plan? Like I know I'm not I'm not no. well, but I'm gonna go inside and make it look like everything is fine. Do, would you, do you do, do anything like that? Uh, yeah, sometimes that's the thing because sometimes the fact that because um, I'm her older brother, so I'm sort of like dad to her in some ways, next closest thing to her dad. So when I go home, sometimes I might be a little bit angry or a little bit upset about something, but the fact that your a child comes up to you running is happy, that should automatically get you in a better mood. Sometimes, yes, you might just really not be the mood, you might be very tired. And in those cases, sometimes parents might go home and they're like, oh, be quiet, go and sit quietly. Yeah. And that, to you, you don't, think much of it but the child will get really upset and they could hold that against you for a little while and if you do that a few times a couple of times it might become normal for you but to them they will hold it in so I think really what you need to try and do is if you're upset or you're not in the mood don't take it out mm. on your kids if they're making a bit of noise you say oh can you be a bit quiet or, yeah. or just explain it to them nicely say oh um, dad's not in the mood today dad's a bit tired can you play a bit quietly or could you mind playing in another room with your sister or your brother whatever it mm. is they're more likely to understand and listen because people don't realize kids understand a lot of things they just because they can't express it um, as well as adults can well a lot of them can nowadays but um, doesn't mean that they don't know something you could be sitting there you don't have to say a lot but they will look at your body language the way you're acting with them and they'll know whether it's positive vibes and negative vibes coming from you. Well, you, well, you bo you're born here, isn't it? I was born here, okay, yes. I want to ask you something. So imagine a lot of our young people, but they don't speak Bangla. To be honest, they don't know all those words we use. We, it's all mixed. Do you, do you have a difficult understanding when the parents are talking to you? Um, it was a little bit different with me, and I'll use my younger sibling as an example. When I was growing up at home, it was just mum and dad and my older sister. and. Obviously, my parents, they only spoke Bengali at home. They said, when you're at home, speak Bengali because their English wasn't too great. And due to that, I can speak Bengali, I can understand okay. it, I have no issues. But as my younger sister, she, when she was growing up, now she's got three siblings and we all speak English. So as she was growing up, we used to speak English to her. And I realised as she was growing up, she did find difficulties in speaking Bengali properly and trying to... She could understand most of it, but her speaking wasn't too great. Mm. And that's because obviously she's learning English in school. When she comes home, um, now she's speaking to her siblings in English and to her parents in, she'll, sp like, she'll speak to my parents in English as well, so they can understand <laughs> what she's saying. That's a normal thing though, she can't, isn't it? She can't say anything in English, so she just speaks in English. And parents kind of understand what their par kids are saying, so that's what happens. So I think there is an issue where, yeah, obviously, yeah. where especially the younger parents who were born in this country, they would prefer to speak English to their children. And because of that, then the Bengali might not be as good. I'm going to bring in <coughs> Abdul Hakim Bayan, you know, amazing thing he said, you know, he like, did, he did. it's true, as the parents, we can't express something, a lot of things, we don't even show it. Showing is the biggest problem we're having, actually, in our community, we don't show it. We love our wife, we don't show it. We love our parents, we don't show it. We love our children, we don't show it. Why not? What's wrong with that? So do you find it difficult showing or do you think it's a, it's, it's a big issue for everyone? Um, to begin with, yes. When I had my first child and the second one probably, yeah, the bonding and relationship wasn't that great. I think it was more traditional way as you were speaking about his dad. We didn't have that good relationship. What do you mean by good? Uh, and I was born and brought up here, but I was uh, uh, brought up in a 
a culture of not British. You know, I'm not going to say British, more Bengali culture. Although I was, went to school here, studied here, but uh, I was brought up in that but culture. But they are lovely, you know, they're lovely Bangladeshi parents, you know, Tararo Zankulia did which is hey, but I give you a matter of love. Tarana, hey, I'm not going to Jenny, uh, the last bread program, you know, they, for that reason, I'm very emotional. Balafai, any other day, I'm going to show you. Oh, I'm going to give you my bread back. That is the problem we have. That's it, true. As I you think. said before, the parents are not expressing their love. And that's what the problem is. We didn't learn, we didn't see our parents, our mothers, or fathers expressing their love to uh, me or my sisters. So we didn't learn that. Can I just it's quickly say one thing before, before I forget and you can carry on. carry on? It's like when I was growing up, I didn't realise this until I'm um, older now, but when I was younger, um, when I used to go food shopping, my dad used to always say, go and get whatever you want. And I used to go to the crisp aisle and the chocolates aisle, and I used to get baskets. I used to fill up the baskets with crisps and chocolates. And not once did he ever say to me, that's too much, you can't have all that you're being greedy or nothing like that. He'd, o he'd always let us have it and there was my stockroom was always filled up with crisps and chocolates. It was never, in some households you go there and there's not always loads of crisps and chocolates, but in, when it came to food, my dad never sort of said, no, you can't have this. Can you I give you a challenge that. then? I know you sh look, uh, look how much he likes you and how much he loves you. Mm. In e every action shows actually, maybe people can't speak, but the action show how much they love us, honestly. Yeah. Would it be difficult for you to say your mom, I love you? Would it be difficult for you to say it? No. You sure? Do it then. I love you, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I, ask you this. I, st I started saying it to her. I never used to say it to her when I was younger. But then I realised, why don't I say it? Um, because of the... Your dad will say, what, what's wrong with me? Say it culture to him well. I grew up Say it to him as well. I love you, Dad. Go on. I love you, Dad. <laughs> dad, I love you. Uh, but it's different Thanks. with him. No, no, He's no. a little bit more reserved. With okay. my mum, I've been able to get her to open up a little bit more and because she's at home more so I see her more and it was only in my teenage years I realized why don't um, especially Bengalis you never say to your parents I love you and your parents never say I love you back or anything so whenever I used to go out the house or anything I said okay mom I'm going I love you and it started off as a joke first she'd laugh at me but then I thought it's a good thing really because it's the last thing you're going to say to your parents before you oh, go so that's if nice. something God forbid if something did happen, for example, that's the last time you're speaking to your mum before and you, before like, you come back and she, she, maybe she's not there anymore. <coughs> do you want the last thing to be something bad or do you want it to be, I love you? And it's, it's not anything big, but it's sort of, I think they struggle, to, like I said, they struggle to express it. Yeah. So to them, it's like the words have so much weight and they can't get out. The more you express it, the easier it is. I think we should, this is the age we should do, all of us should do it. So our next kids and everything, they could, they could you know, uh, adopt that. I think we have to do it. Like, yeah, so we were talking, can we go back to him? Yeah, certainly. Inshallah. Thank you for using those words, fantastic. No, amazing thing you said, it's, yeah, expression is, expression is a very important thing. So I would, uh, would I, I, I'm going to find it difficult to say I love you to my mother because I never, that, uh, no, let's, let's, <laughs> let's we all do it. Go on, you do it, I'll do it as well. Come on. So this is very, very easy. The first Not time is always the hardest. Just get the first one done out of the way. It gets easier after that. If you're, uh, if you're in front of her, because of the culture you have. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. I love you. I said it now. Um, you're going to say it. I mean, who, who else is going to say it? I mean, look, uh, there is it, nobody it, closer to the mother than your children. I think, think children are more close to the mother anyway, whether they say, love, I love you or not. Because they, they're seeing the mother most. They're open to the mother's most. Anything happens, they will open to the mother than the father. This, this is the fact. I think the children I, th I, think th I think we should talk I about that. Why is yeah. that? Why is that? I was going like to say, that? why is the mother's, in our culture, father is more like a. a He's not around anymore, and mother is the one who takes all the <coughs> difficulties, man, all the problems, everything else. Um, you know, she's end up with all the troubles. And you know, is I think why is it like that, man? In our culture, generally, it's changing now, but generally, the father goes out and works, and mm. the mother's the housewife yeah. at home. It's starting to change now a little bit, but going back to that s sort of scenario, the mother's always at home, so the child spends more time with the mother. So naturally they're closer. But what you don't understand is being a child, if your mum's always there and your dad's not, when your dad is there, you always want to spend that time that your dad is home with your dad. And 
if your dad comes home and he's grumpy or he's not in a mood to spend mm. a bit of time with the kids, then when is it? Mm. When are your children going to spend time with you? When are they going to build that bond with you? So that little bit of time, that even if you are working and you come home, that little bit of time if you spend with your children every day, you'll realize your children will probably be closer to the father than the mother. Because they, they value, yeah. yes, yeah, they, they value yeah. that time a lot more. Because they know be home all the time. They know I'm you're working for them. They knows that yeah, you're working for them. Every kid knows. My mom's not make working. My father is. So even if you spend a little time, they already have that built-in respect <coughs> for you. And they know you're more protecting than the mother because if anything happens to you, you're going to be the one who is protecting them. Yes, yeah, sorry. This is the fathers. Well, well, they, 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 because they're not spending time, they're missing out a lot. The, the bonding is not there because they don't go to school parenting. They don't pick up them from the school. They don't drop them to school. So a lot of things uh, play a role in it, especially our fathers. They do evening shift work, night shift work. They finish quite late at night. They come home. They're sleeping two, two, three out of the days. They woke up and they go back to work again straight away. So the, the time is one. Yeah, so that's, that's what it is. Okay, we only got five minutes. We're going to go break and you're going to leave. Um, we were talking about problems before. We want to do, talk about solutions. So um, what kind of solution do you think for all those <coughs> uh, people at home not doing anything? So I'm talking about kids that can't find a job. Kids are Quran night, they're trying. They can't find a job. Parents are not comfortable bringing them, taking them out because of the gangs, uh, gangsters outside, the drugs, the smoking, everything else. So what do you think solution for that? There's a few things I want to say about that. Firstly, they need good role models at home. If they have good role models, good sort of relationship with the son has a good relationship with the father, daughters have a good relationship with their mothers, they are more likely to take their advice and their guidance and listen to them. For example, if they say to them, you shouldn't really be doing this or going to this place, they're more likely to listen. Secondly, they, parents need to spend more time with their kids, I think, um, th to create that bond and closeness. So, What is your role model? Break it down. What do you want people to do? Well, role model means everything, isn't it? Do it, it does, what does it mean? Yeah. really. So break it down like, okay, if I'm doing the hoover, I want you to do the hoover. I'm doing something, you do something. You know, like be the person, not just telling everybody to do. Yeah. You do it. That's, that, no, no, that's why. That's right. If you're sitting there and you're saying, do this, do that, do this, but you don't do anything yourself, that's like a dictatorship. Yeah. Mm. Yes. It's, it's only a matter of time before your, your son or daughter is going to start to rebel. Yeah. So, sort of, you, you have to act what you preach on. So you can't say, do this, do that. And like you said, for example, say you can't smoke, but you're sitting there smoking yourself. It's sort of, it doesn't work out. Um, but the other thing is, like I said, you know, you're, for example, you've got a son, he's just finished college and he's looking for a job. Instead of saying, get off your ass, why, why haven't you got a job yet? It's been two months. You try and be a bit supportive. Say, okay, I know you're looking, um, keep yeah. trying. Um, and try and help them. Instead of saying, F get a job, get a job. Maybe give them a couple of leads, speak to a couple of people, say, um, and say, oh, I spoke to this person for you, or look up mm. on this website, I had a look, you might be interested in this, because it shows them you're taking an active interest. You're not just saying things. Like I said, it's little actions. It's, it's not big things, but it's little actions. You saying to your son, you want him to get a job? Help, help him. Don't, yeah. don't just say, get a job. Look, there could be another one um, from our young side of it, uh, as a... Um, we might not respect them as we should. There are some cases, a lot of cases, that young people not respecting as they should do. So what do we do in one minute, if you can? What should you do from a parent's perspective? No, the, the, the younger one, kids' perspective. What shall we do? Because they, they, it's very true, there are young people, actually, they're, yeah. they're not respecting their parents. They know that this is their parents, and they're also rebelling. They're going against it. They're doing everything they don't want parents to do, you know, ask them to not to do. So we need to, there, I don't we need to show up from our yeah, side. I don't think there's any specific sort yeah. of right answer for that, where if you do this, it will stop them from disrespecting their parents and make them <coughs> more obedient. I think, like uh, Prophet said, every child is different. You need to look at the child and see what's, why are they sort of rebelling? Why are they not listening to you? Why are they disrespecting you? There's always a cause. There's always a reason behind why they're doing what they're doing. Are they unhappy about something? Maybe they're not happy with the situation at home. Maybe 
um, there's something, whether it's financial problems, family problems, or problems outside, could even be in school, could start to leave school, maybe they're being bullied at school, mm. they're not happy at school. So there's various different reasons and you need to try and that's where being close to your children comes in. So if you're closer, you can work out. Okay, I want you to say uh, in 10 seconds something to our par you know, ki parents and the kids, your last, last word um, on that camera. If there's anything I can say, I would say try to just get to know your children a little bit better, spend a little bit of time with them, even if it's every day, find something that they're doing and you think it's good and just try and support them. That's all it is. A little bit of support will make a big difference to them. So, I'm going to talk to you about the I learned so much from you. Thank you for being honest and um, the way you showed your love for your parents, you know, and the how you also said practically how we can have a good communication with our kids. It's, it's amazing. I've got a lot to uh, And the learn best word myself. you said, I love you, mom. That's the fantastic word you said. And uh, we're just going to go for a break and um, uh, we'll see you after the break, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.